speed of the transaction to the ML file underscore SCN of a commit and CMT as committed. Uh, it took so long because uh, on an environment where you have no transactions going on, uh, we have a 20 commit delay before actually committing a file. Why? Because it has occurred that especially in real application clusters, a commit can be first and then we, can, we have a transaction. So if you do regular update, for example, or insert or, or small transaction, and you put commit, the commit goes first to the read lock and then you can have associated transaction. So y we can't, you know, uh, do um, interpret everything in a serial way. We just have to wait uh, to another commit uh, going from the server uh, to interpret if the transaction actually was already passed or not. So if nothing is happening on the server, uh, there is a little bit delay, but you can uh, you can use parameters to tune it. Uh, there is um, we have a parameters for how long the commit delay should be. So when applicator will actually see this DML file, when I will start the applicator in this APET application. It just interpreted, <coughs> read everything, sorted it, and applied on the other side. Um, everything here is, of course, written uh, in Python. So when you will uh, start the appliance, all the codes is already here. Um, well, that's why the open source, you can't hide the code. So, <laughs> so you can sit down in a lonely night and take a beer and read it. For example, parser is only 2,000 lines, so it's actually not very big. You can, of course, turn on debug mode. For example, right now, parser was running in a debug mode and it creates fucking a lot, a lot of information. So here, for example, you will see that, um, oh, for example, here, that in this, uh, In thread one, sequence 256, in this block, on this offset, I found uh, opcode 51. So I found undo information for object uh, with database object ID this and this. And this is supposed to be uh, a target object name in schema HR2 table employees. You can see going through the undo, checking the undo size, checking txt, how many columns were changed, uh, where in the file, in the record file position we found it, uh, what was the ab uh, EML structure that was created, to which file it was uh, submitted, uh, you can see the commit array size for the delays. You can see actually each and almost each and every step that is being done in a process will be found in a log when running in a debug mode. Uh, but well, you should use it with care because it can produce like gigabytes of logs in a second if you have a lot of transactions because each and every <coughs> SQL will be also reported in here. So uh, when we were playing with it, we found a few exciting th 
thing and a few, few uh, unexpectable thing, things. Uh, for example, you know, uh, when you update something and hit, for example, unique constraint violated, right? What will happen? I have, uh, for example, here, I have, of course, table employees, which is very well known. There is a primary key. And I will update employee and set employee ID equals 100. So there is already a 100. And I will hit enter. And I will get <laughs> so, unit constraint violated. So, what actually happens at the real work level? Let's check it. Switch, get arc, dump, the trace. And... Uh, And I'm not familiar with the comments. Look what has happened. We hit constraint violation, but in the riddle logs, there are uh, there are one, two, three updates with angle information, and three rollbacks. So uh, it has occurred that uh, constraint checking uh, can generate a real overhead in the terms um, of the read logs and that it can be a little bit um, well <coughs> asynchronous. So each time you are depending on the constraints while validating a data, and each time you have you have uh, a lot of constraint violation, you will have automatically a lot of rollbacks. And actually, uh, one of my customers, uh, when, when I was talk, uh, writing about it on my blog, one of my customers called me and said, you know what, uh, I was arguing with our developers for last month because in uh, AWR I can see that there are a lot of rollbacks. And they said they are not using rollbacks. So they were arguing and after reading this he asked them, okay, are you doing a pre-validation of the data? No, we are basing on constraints. Ah, hence you have rollbacks. And well, you should you could think that when you are changing a role to the uh, to the value that it already exists, you should it should give you unique constraint violated just like that already. But it doesn't. Here it took three changes after uh, uh, it got uh, actually validated. And the same thing can be with deletes. If I will try to delete them, the, uh, everything from employee stable, I will see right? So I will get a foreign key violated. There is upper row. But when I will check um, when 